Alright folks, so for this video, uh, I'm going to go over the procedures you're going to follow to compare glass using uh, different liquids uh, of different refractive indices. In our previous video, I explained what refractive index is and how we can uh, use the concept of refractive index to compare glass. And then we're going to put that to practice uh, for our lab exercise. And again, this video is going to go through the procedures on how to do that. So if you remember, in our last video, I showed you how when you submerge uh, something like a piece of glass into a liquid, if they have different refractive indices, if the glass that you put um, in a liquid has a different refractive indices than the liquid it's, it's in, it's pretty easy to be able to see that, that glass. So for example, inside of this beaker here, I have this smaller beaker, which is pretty easy to see inside there because the glass of the beaker and the liquid, the water, have a very different refractive indice. But in this beaker, remember we put our borosilicate um, beaker into the beaker that had the oil in it. And so inside of here, there is a glass beaker, it's just really hard to see. Here's the beaker. But when we submerge it, it's really tough to see because the beaker itself has a refractive indice pretty close to the oil it's submerged within. So we're going to use that concept um, to compare the refractive indice of some glass that you have to some different liquids. So hopefully uh, when you did the earlier part of the exercise when you broke your glass, you took your sheet of glass and you you put it inside the plastic bag and then you you hit it with the nails and broke it, chances are you have a couple of small pieces of glass um, that, that broke off. So what I have in my hand here, I just I had just collected them. So when I when I took the masking tape off, I had a couple small pieces of glass that broke off. I kept those. I put them in this little test tube here because I wanted to actually use these and use um, this submersion technique where we actually submerge a piece of glass in a liquid uh, to take a look at refractive index. So hopefully you should have a couple pieces of glass like this left over from when you broke your glass earlier. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a couple of these pieces of broken glass and we're going to submerge them into a couple of different liquids. Now, uh, you don't have to do all the liquids that I have here. Uh, I do want you to, to choose two. Um, if One of the liquids, if you want to try, uh, the canola or Wesson oil works great. Um, certainly water, just normal water will work. If you can get a hold of it though, the best oil to use, or the best liquid to use is what's called glycerin. And glycerin can be found uh, at almost most retailers like Fry's and Walmart over in the pharmacy area. You can go buy uh, some glycerin. Or another liquid you can use is baby oil. Baby oil has a refractive index really close to soda lime glass, which most likely the glass that you used or that was part of your uh, picture frame that you broke is probably soda lime glass. So choose two. If you want to do all four, that's great. But I want you to do this with at least two different liquids. So you can do the water and the oil, or you can do water and glycerin, or you can do oil and glycerin. Preferably, I'd love if you could do it in the glycerin, because this exercise works really great with glycerin. Now what I did is I used, uh, uh, this is called a spot plate. So this is kind of like a ceramic uh, plate that's got little teeny wells or almost like little dishes. There's uh, looks like 12 of them on here. And what I did is I put a little bit of the liquid in each of the wells. So I put a little bit of glycerin in each of these wells. Tried to, to kind of fill them up. So I put a little bit of baby oil in some of these. Now you're obviously not going to have one of these spot plates. If I was doing this in the lab I'd be using these spot plates. Um, what you're going to have to probably use instead are just small glass containers. So what you might have in your home is you might have some little shot glasses. That'll work. Or what I was able to find also at just my local Walmart, um, kind of in their craft area, they had some small little containers. So a little plastic container like this will work. Or this is a, like a little pill or cosmetics container. You could, you could get these. These cost me, I think I got four of these for a dollar at the dollar store or this little metal canister will work just fine. So what you're going to do is you're going to use these little small containers. Again, doesn't matter what you choose. I'm, I can use these little small metal ones. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill them up with these liquids. So in this container, I'm going to put the glycerin. So I'm going to fill it up with quite a bit of glycerin here. Okay. 
right? So here's here's one of my containers that's got the glycerin in it, and then I don't know. Let's just we'll just do we'll do water in another one. We'll do water in another one. So we'll do water in one. Try not to make a mess here. Pour it a little bit too much. Pour a little bit back out. Okay, so I have water and glycerin in. I don't know. Let's we'll use this other container. Maybe we'll maybe we'll put a little bit of of this canola oil in there. So I have these three containers. If you have them, not that you're likely to have them in your house, you can actually buy them at the at the store, but you could also do this in, in small test tubes if you'd like. All right, so what I have is I have my three containers. I'm going to come around to the front of the table, and uh, uh, we're going to do a little close-up of these in just a moment. But So again, I have my glycerin. That one's got glycerin in it. This one has oil in it. And then I put water in this one right here. All right. So now, I have these containers. They have different types of glasses, and this one happens to be soda lime glass. Soda lime glass is the most common glass you're ever going to find. Uh, most of your windows in your house are made out of soda lime glass. Uh, the, you know, your, your dinnerware, the, the glasses that you drink your milk in are most likely made out of soda lime glass. Bottles are usually soda lime glass. Uh, you might have flint glass. Um, that's not as common. Borosilicate glass. A lot of chemistry glassware and cookingware uh, is made out of the borosilicate glass. But anyway, I have these three different types of glass here. Again, the soda lime glass, flint glass, and borosilicate glass. Okay, what we're going to do, and I'm going to go ahead and adjust the camera here. If we'll just hold tight while I adjust the camera. I'm going to move up. And then we're going to come in on our three containers here. I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit so we can see them really close and refocus. Alright, so hopefully this shows up on our video really good. So again, the middle container contains glycerin. This one here on the right, that one's the canola oil, and the one on the left here is water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully drop each of the glass beads, uh, one of each of the glass beads into each liquid, and then we're going to observe what the, the glass does in the liquid, whether the glass is clearly visible, so it's really easy to see, or whether the glass is nearly invisible, where it becomes hard to see, or or if it is, you know, sort of visible. So in the water here on the left, the first one I have here in my hand is, this is the borosilicate glass. I'm going to go ahead and drop that, that in there. And so that's the borosilicate glass. That's the water. I'm going to add just a little bit more water to our... Because we want that glass bead to be fully submerged. All right, so there you can see that the borosilicate glass, you can see it's, it's clearly visible. I can clearly see that glass bead in the water. The next type of glass I'm going to take is, I'm going to take the flint glass. Alright, so another piece of glass, I'm going to take a piece of flint glass. Again, I'm going to drop it in our water. And again, it also, in water, is clearly visible. Now, that makes sense because water, the refractive index of water is nowhere close to the refractive index of glass. And so, finally, I'm going to put a, my, our other glass in there. So we have our soda lime glass, our borosilica glass, and our flint glass. And you can clearly see that, we can clearly see all those. There's, there's no problem seeing them there. So that means the refractive index of water is not even anywhere close to the refractive index of either of our three pieces of glass. All right, so let's look, let's look at the middle one. Let's look at the glycerin. Um, so I'm going to take a, a piece of the, let's start with the flint glass. So get one of my old pieces of flint glass. I'm going to put it in our glycerin. I'm going to drop it in there. Now glycerin's really thick and a very viscous liquid, so it's going to take a sec. In fact, I'm going to take my pencil and kind of poke it down in there. It takes a sec to submerge. So, all right, so now, now the flint glass is submerged in, in the glycerin, and notice that it's, it's harder to see the flint glass in the glycerin than it was to see the flint glass in the water, and that's because the glycerin has a refractive index closer to the flint glass than water. And so you can start to see that the flint glass is not clearly visible, I'd say it's nearly invisible, so it's kind of hard to see. Watch what happens now, though, when I take some borosilicate glass. So I'm going to take a different glass, so this one's borosilicate. Here's our glass bead. I'm going to drop it in there. All right, so I dropped it in there. 
So there you can see it. I'm going to go ahead and poke it with my pencil so that it sinks down in. And notice now, you can't even see that glass bead anymore. It's, it's almost entirely disappeared. It's there. In fact, I'll drop another one in there just so you can see that it's there. Right, so here's a, another piece of the borosilicate glass. Right, so there you can see it. It's right there up on top. It's because it hasn't sunk down in yet. Here's another one. I'm going to drop another one in there. So there's the borosilicate glass. I'm going to poke it with my pencil so it sinks down in. And then notice as soon as it sinks down in, it just disappears. So the one you see there, that one, that one was the flint glass. But the borosilicate glass is almost completely disappeared. And that's because the borosilicate glass, the refractive index of borosilicate glass is almost exactly the same as the glycerin. Whereas the flint glass has a different refractive index. So we can we can see the flint glass, not as good as we could see it when we looked at the water. It's, it's, it's harder to see in the glycerin than it was in the water. But we can definitely tell that the borosilicate glass disappeared in the glycerin. It didn't dissolve, it's still there. But it's, it's almost impossible to see because it has the exact same refractive index. And we could do the exact same thing with our last liquid, so with the oil. So again, let's start with the, let's, actually, let's start with the flint glass. See what happens there. So I've got a piece of flint glass here. I'm going to drop it in the right one, which is the oil. All right, and if you see, it's 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 there. You can see it pretty clearly right there on the bottom. So the flint glass and the oil, they're not even close so in terms of refractive index. But let's try the borosilicate glass and see what happens there. So I'm going to take a piece of borosilicate glass. I'm going to drop it in the oil. And that one, that's, I can still see it. It's kind of hard to see, but it's, it's, so I would say it's nearly invisible, but I can, I can, I still can see it. So of the three, if I was recording my observations, I would say that in the water, I can clearly see all three glasses, the flint glass, the borosilicate glass, and the sodalime glass. In the glycerin, I can clearly see the flint glass but in my, I would definitely say that the borosilicate glass is invisible. It's disappeared. And then here in the oil, I, can, I would probably say that the flint glass is nearly invisible. It's kind of hard to see, but I can still see it. And the borosilicate glass, it's nearly invisible. It's not clear. It's, it's nearly invisible, but I still can see it. So of the three, the borosilicate glass is closest in refractive index to the glycerin. So, what I need to do then, so this was just kind of to demonstrate what you're going to do. So what you're going to do is, remember in this test tube here, I, I saved some of my glass when I broke my pane of glass. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of pieces of my glass here that I saved. I'm going to take my forceps here. And remember, what you're going to do at home is you're going to take and put a piece of glass in to the liquid. So I'm going to put one in water. And there you can see that piece of glass is pretty clearly visible in water. And then I'm going to take uh, and put it in a different, a different liquid. So maybe at home you might choose the oil. So you could put your glass in oil and then see, is it clearly visible? Is it invisible? I have another piece of glass. So again, these all came from that, that picture frame glass that we broke. And I'm going to put it in the glycerin. Poke it in there and see if it submerges there a little bit. Now look at that. So the borosilicate glass was com completely invisible in the glycerin, but when I just put my piece of glass from my picture frame in the glycerin, I can clearly see the edges of it. So that tells me right away that the piece of glass from the picture frame is definitely not borosilicate glass. In fact, it's probably one of the other two. Most likely it's probably uh, sodaline glass. Uh, which is, again, what most common glass is. So for your exercise, what you're going to do is you're going to take a couple pieces of your, a couple small pieces of your broken glass, and you're going to submerge them in some different liquids, and then you're going to record whether or not that piece of glass is clearly visible, nearly invisible, or invisible. And then any glass that becomes invisible in a liquid, well, then we would say that the liquid and the glass have the exact same refractive index. To go a step further, we're going to do this on the macroscopic level, meaning that we can, we're going to do this with our, our naked eye. But we could also do this on the microscopic level. If we had 
pieces of glass that were even smaller than the ones we have here, we could actually put those pieces of glass on a microscope slide, submerge them in some oils on the surface of that slide, and then make our observations under the microscope. So we can still do this same technique uh, on a microscopic level for even tinier pieces of glass. So again, this is the procedures that you're going to follow to do the refractive index comparison using this submersion method.